Corgi Austin A40 Farina. This little die-cast car was produced by Corgi between 1959 and 1962 and the model number is 216. The real car was manufactured by Austin from 1958 all the way through to 1967 though the Mark I that this particular model represents was replaced in 1961 with a version that had a wider and smilier grille. Incidentally, the 40 in the A40 name related to the amount of horsepower produced. Not much by today's standards. Stick a tuned 1380cc lump in there and that would be fun though. Anyway, this example is being restored as a present for my dad as I remember him saying that his dad had one in a light blue with a blue roof very similar to this one's original colour scheme. As you can see, this example is well battered, needs new tyres and the glass could be better. Also, the A-pillars are broken where they join the roof. Not too bad, but in need of fixing. The first step is to take it apart. The two smaller rivets at the rear already have small holes, but the front one is a smooth dome, so to stand any chance of drilling, it needs to be filed flat. Taking a cautious approach, I used my hand drill to make a decent pilot point on all the rivet heads. After that, it's out with a power drill and a wider bit to take off the heads of all the rivets. The base plate then comes away from the body and the car can be broken into its various sections. Incidentally, there was another flange stroke rivet in the roof that needed some careful drilling before the glass would pop out easy enough. The base plate was bent, but clamping it between two bits of wood the right size went a long way to sorting that out. And once I was happy it was straight enough, it was out with a paint stripper followed by some wire brushing with the multi-tool to fully clean it up. Once it was ready, I hit it with some satin black from a rattle can I also cleaned up and polished the wheels and popped some fresh tyres on them. And that's the base ready. Then we're on to the body shell, which had been left in paint stripper overnight. That original paint was very stubborn. The broken windscreen pillars and the roof were realigned using small pliers wrapped in tape. Tricky to film properly, which is why there's not much shown. They were then fixed in place using gel superglue on both sides of the join, followed by a bit of final tweaking to get them to sit right. I left the repair to fully harden for a couple of days and the end result was acceptable. I've not filmed priming the shell or the flatting of it with 1200 grit wet paper. It needed a second coat and another gentle flatting, this time with 2000 grit, before going for the top coat. A Ford Olympic blue that looked a reasonable match and it's a lovely colour anyway. What a nightmare. The can dribbled, frothed, bubbled and generally made a complete mess. But at least the spray pattern was okay and I ended up with a decent finish on that little Austin. But it left me with very blue fingers and a very messy work area. I know the original plastic glass unit can be improved, so I'll stick that in the spares box. As this is a present for Dad, I'd already got a better quality replacement online. This new unit was cleaned and buffed using some Meguiar's swirl remover before being dipped into a jar of Pledge Revive It floor gloss. You have to wick off the excess then make sure it is kept free from dust as it dries. It's a worthwhile step to add that extra touch of uh, shine to it. The dark blue of the roof was applied using an airbrush, something I still feel I lack the skill to use well. However, I am happy with the end result. Now, onto the detailing of the body and my first ever attempt using bare metal foil. Bumpers, headlight bezels, side trim, door handles. The more I did, the easier it got and the better I became at applying it. Headlamps were picked out in Tamiya gloss white and the main grille given a wash of matte black. The following day, the grille got a dry brushing of chrome silver just to pick it out. I wanted the effect subtle and not overblown. After much deliberation, I used more bare metal foil for the rear lights, painting the lenses with clear orange and clear red. It 
gave the effect I was after, so I'm happy. The glass was refitted using a bit of PVA glue, gently pressing into place and left to dry overnight. Finally, the base was refixed using small self-tapping screws that I'd already screwed into the body posts beforehand to cut the thread. And then we have the finished car. There's always more detailing you can do on these, but overall I'm pleased with the result, if slightly annoyed at getting fingerprints on the glass. Hope you've enjoyed watching. Thank you until next time.